Hi, I'm Mrs. Cook and I'm the IDS at Hoffman Trails Elementary. Today, I'm going to be reading a March book, Madness book, titled Classified, The Secret Career of Mary Golda Ross, Cherokee Aerospace Engineer, written by Tracy Sorrell and illustrated by Natasha Donovan. Classified, The Secret Career of Mary Golda Ross, Cherokee Aerospace Engineer. Written by Tracy Sorrell, illustrated by Natasha Donovan. A note on Cherokee values. While a written guidebook on Cherokee values does not exist, important lessons have been taught by Cherokee families to their children across the generations. Mary Golda Ross's parents instilled the tribe's values in their children. Some of the values that shaped Mary, including gaining skills in all areas of life, both within and outside the classroom, working cooperatively with others, remaining humble when others recognize your talents, and helping ensure equal education and opportunity for all. Do the best you can and search out available knowledge and build on it. I started with a firm foundation in mathematics and qualities that came down to me from my Indian heritage. Mary Golda Ross, April 2008. Young Mary Golda Ross pushed her pencil across the page. Puzzling out math equations made her happy. Teenage girls in the 1920s weren't expected to enjoy or excel in math or science. But Mary did, and she blazed a trail for others. In the hills of northeastern Oklahoma, Mary's Cherokee tribe provided education for everyone. Her great-great-grandfather, John Ross, had served as principal chief of the Cherokee Nation. He helped create a school that later became a state teacher's college, which Mary began attending at the age of 16. When the boys refused to sit next to the only girl in math class, Mary felt motivated to get better grades than they did. And she didn't stop there. Holding true to her tribe's belief about gaining life skills in all areas, Mary took advantage of every opportunity to learn. In college, she majored in math, believing the world is so technical, if you plan to work in it, a math background will let you go farther and faster. After graduation, Mary taught math and science to high school students. Even then, she saw more ways to grow and contribute. Mary moved to Washington, D.C., where a supervisor at the Bureau of Indian Affairs noticed her talent. She was then hired to be the girls' advisor at the Bureau's co-ed boarding school in Santa Fe, New Mexico. The Cherokee value of instructing in a gentle, thoughtful way guided Mary as she encouraged the next generation of Pueblo and Navajo girls to learn and excel. Mary soon found that others outside the classroom needed her math and science knowledge too. After the United States entered World War II in 1941, Mary left her teaching career and moved once again, this time to Los Angeles, California. Mary got a job as a mathematician for the Lockheed Aircraft Corporation. She helped solve a design problem affecting the safe operation of the P-38 Lightning Fighter, one of Lockheed's fast-flying planes, and she enjoyed the research. Now she wanted to design and build aircraft and spacecraft as an engineer. At that time, only men served as engineers in the large corporation. Mary thought back to when she was the lone girl in her math and science classes. She wasn't intimidated, but she knew she needed more training. Mary focused. The company helped her take engineering classes at a nearby university. She had to balance her job duties and homework. Would the men Mary worked with accept her as their equal? They did. Mary became Lockheed's first female engineer 
and helped other women join the field. She modeled the Cherokee value of working together in mind and heart. She shared her knowledge and asked questions to improve designs. Her male colleagues respected her talent, her drive to solve problems, and how she worked in the team. None of them realized, though, what would come next. With World War II almost over, the race between the United States and the Soviet Union to reach outer space sped up. The company selected Mary to be one of 40 engineers in a super secret work team. Mary described their mission as taking the theoretical and making it real. What did that even mean? It meant Mary worked on projects that people had only imagined and some no one ever thought of before. No vessel had ever flown nonstop around Earth with or without a pilot. Flying beyond Earth? That seemed impossible. Determined, she and her colleagues would figure out how to do it. When Mary accepted the invitation to join Lockheed's top secret group, known as Skunk Works Division, she knew most of her work would be classified. Today, a lot of it still is. When Mary appeared on a Guess My Job TV game show, she surprised the host when her line of work was finally revealed. Even though Mary worked on world-changing projects, she never sought the spotlight. Along with her colleagues, Mary researched orbiting satellites, like those that monitor weather patterns and send signals to televisions. She designed concepts for space travel to Venus and Mars. Her critical work on spacecraft later helped the Apollo space program send astronauts to the moon. But what if nobody ever knew her name or recognized her as the important engineer she was? Gemini called first true flying machine in space. Suited up for space. Walking 100 miles above Earth. That didn't matter to Mary. Her life reflected another Cherokee value, humility. Mary never bragged or drew attention to her skills. Her work, including helping to put a man on the moon, spoke for itself. Whenever Mary received awards, she always thanked her colleagues because she knew no one person deserved credit for what everyone had done together. In her quiet, steadfast way, Mary kept right on blazing a trail for others to follow for the rest of her life. Although her work was classified, Mary still had much to share. She never stopped recruiting American Indians and young women to study math and science and helping support them to become engineers. Mary's work and her legacy of service have helped many others become trailblazers too. Here is a timeline of her life. She was born on August 9, 1908. She graduated at the age of 16 from high school on May 18, 1925. She graduated from college at the age of 20 in July 19, 1928. Until we go forward when in 1950, she officially becomes Lockheed's first woman engineer. In the author note, Mary drew on her status as the first known Native American female engineer to make sure those coming after her would be welcome in math and engineering. She strongly supported the American Indian Science and Engineering Society with vocal and financial backing. Mary gave talks to high school and college students, encouraging young women and Native Americans to get a firm foundation in math and train for technical careers. She lived the Cherokee values she had been raised with, benefiting us all in doing so.